Hey guys, Colton Tacker here on Sonic and OK Care for Next 2020 here. Bring to you part 10 of the 2020 edition of the walkthrough of the Dell Dimension 4600 running Windows XP Home Edition. Wow, part 10 of the walkthrough. Can you believe it? We're already at part 10. This is really nice. I can't believe it. So anyway, um, for part 10, we're going to finish up taking a look at the walk. Uh, we're going we're gonna to finish taking a look at the tutorials for the Microsoft Money 2004 stuff. The last few tutorials are on working with backup files and banking on a lot of money. So, um, why not just go in and log in? So, let's go. So, I just want to tell you viewers that, um, uh, about yesterday, um, I found out that yesterday that when I... I found out that um, the yesterday the cable for this basement that has this computer working, um, the cable stopped working for some reason. And, and when my dad got home, he had to get the fix. It, it's all fixed now. Yeah, that's why I couldn't make a part on this walk for yesterday because uh, the cable wouldn't work. But um, at least it works now, so this is pretty good. So let's go to the C drive. Go to Program Files, find Microsoft Money, Media, AV Help, and then we'll go into 18BF. BF stands for boyfriend. <laughs> but anyway, it's time to turn off the light and get ready to go into the to the tutorial. So yeah, this computer's starting to go pretty quick in this part since I'm logging in pretty quickly. So this is this is. I like how it got in here pretty quick. That's that's pretty good. Well, it's time to start, so let's do it. Here we go. Look, I'm trying to exit from Microsoft Money, and it's asking if I want to make a backup. Is this the same thing as saving our file? No. Our money file is actually saved automatically whenever we enter a transaction. And whenever we close money, it automatically makes a backup copy of our file on our hard disk. But every couple of weeks, or however often we want, money will ask if we'd like to make a backup copy of our file on a floppy disk. That makes sense. So if something happens to one file, like it gets lost or corrupted for some reason, we have another file to fall back on. And if something happens to our computer's hard disk, we have a copy of our file on a floppy disk. Well, you and I both know it's always a good policy to have two or three copies of anything important. Right. Especially where our financial records are concerned. Does it have to be saved on a floppy disk? Could we save it to another disk drive? We can save it anywhere we want. We just go to the Tools menu, click Options. Let me guess. The Backup tab. You got it. So it always saves a backup on our hard disk automatically. And however often we specify, it'll save another backup somewhere else like on our removable disk drive. But if our removable disk drive doesn't show up here for some reason, we can always just copy the backup file we made on our hard drive to the removable disk drive later. And this is where we can tell money to compress our file, so it doesn't take up too much room. That's especially important if we decide to keep our backup files on a floppy disk. We click OK, and our file backup options are set the way we want. So this backup file, is it just like any other money file? No, it's different. It's a compressed backup file. If we want to open it, money needs to decompress it to its normal size and then convert it to a regular money file. So, what the why it pause? Suppose for oh. whatever reason we need to use our backup file. What would we do? First, we find the backup. If we're using a backup stored on our hard disk, we click Restore Backup on the file menu. Okay, and then click Restore from a backup file and click next this is easy it shows us come on load please why are you going so slow goodness dude it was loading pretty quickly but now it's doing this this is a big difference here why isn't it doing this come on work 
Come on, please. What is taking you so long? Is is the window not responding? What's going on? Come on. Why aren't you working? Guys, g give me a second, please. Oh, are you kidding me? This has never happened before. What in the world? Oh, dang it. Now I have to freaking find the part where I stopped on. Oh, well, I gotta try to go back into the tutorial and eventually, like, try to find the part where I stopped on. Let's click on the file again and then let's see if it opens back up and then maybe it'll work. Let's just see what happens. Alright, give me a second again. This is easy. It shows us where all our right. backup file got is. It fixed. And the last time it was changed. We can look at all the information to make sure it's the right file. Here are the file names, the date, and the size. And if we want a different backup file, like the one from our floppy disk, I bet we click open a different backup file. Right. Money searches our computer for any other backup files. How does money recognize a backup file? By the file name extension. A regular money file has three letters after its name, MNY. The file name extension for a money backup file is MBF. So when money finds all our backup files, we just pick the one we want. And then click restore. We confirm the location where we want the file to go, as well as the file name we want it to have. This file name needs to be unique, so we don't accidentally overwrite another backup, or overwrite the money file itself. Money converts the backup to a regular file. So it's changing the MBF file to an MNY file. And it opens it up for us. We can check to make sure the file has the information we need. If it doesn't, we can restore a different backup. Here's another question. Since we just bought a new computer, we now have two. One for you and one for me. But our money file is on the old computer. What if we decide we want to move it to the new one? We can just save the backup file on a floppy disk. We can then copy from the disk onto the new computer. But a floppy disk only holds 1.44 megabytes. What if the file is bigger than that? Our money file grows larger as we add more and more transactions. Couldn't it become as big as 6 megabytes or more? We don't have to worry about it. Money knows to break up the file to fit onto multiple floppy disks. Oh, then when we restore Someone's the file on our it. new computer, it puts the file back together. But we need to be sure to keep our copies straight so we don't mix up our actual money file. It's easy to manage our money files when we need to. I agree. And with backup files, we can be sure that our information and money is safe and secure. All right, next up, we're gonna do the last tutorial, Bank Online with Money. Now, sorry if some, some parts of it was not going pretty good. It was going pretty slow. But anyway, it's time to continue on with the rest of it. Let's go. We're bank online with money. We got a brochure from our bank today saying they now offer online banking. I'd like to give it a try. Isn't that kind of complicated? Just the opposite. It'll make managing our finances a lot easier. We won't have to type as many entries ourselves, and things can be done automatically for us. Oh, what kind of things? You know, entering transactions, paying bills, balancing accounts. But what about privacy? And is it safe? But doesn't this mean our financial information will be accessible to anyone surfing the web? Absolutely not. Although our information is being transmitted online, we're the only ones who can get to it. Not only do we have our money passport, but we'll have a logon ID and password for each bank or broker we're online with. Okay. Then how do we sign up? Well, because our accounts are already set up in money, we come here to the Account Setup page, click this link, and go to the Online Banking Services page. I see. Then we click Set Up Online Services next to the bank name. We find our bank in this list, and then we can log on to get our information at the bank. But we're stopped here, aren't we? I don't know what to enter. If we don't have the logon information yet, money can help us with that too. This wizard tells us how we go about getting a logon ID from our bank. Then we return here and set up online financial services for this bank. Excellent! Money downloads the information on all our accounts with this bank into our money file. It's very convenient, especially since we have a checking and savings account with them. So this sets up online services for both accounts at once. And if some of these accounts aren't created in money yet, money will create them for us if we like. 
This is so easy. We barely have to lift a finger. Now, now that we're set up, we can download transactions. Isn't that basically our bank statement sent to us electronically? Right. As soon as a check clears the bank, or we make a deposit, or transfer funds between accounts, the transaction can be brought into our money file. Where does it go? Straight into the account register. You mean it'll enter the transactions in our account register without our having to type it in? That's right. Wow, that's a huge time saver. And we don't have to call or wait for our monthly statement to find out about our transactions. Or about our account balance or interest either. Many banks offer what's called direct or background banking. This means that when we're signed into money and connected to the Internet, money can directly communicate with our bank and bring in our transactions. You mean money automatically requests that our transactions be downloaded? While we work on something else. Incredible. How often will it do this? As often as we tell it. It could be once per session, once a week, once a month, whenever we want. Let's set it to five downloads a month. Our bank gives us that many for free. We can customize our settings for background banking any way we like. Some banks don't offer background banking yet. Instead, they might offer what's called web banking. We can log on to the bank's website. I see. We log on and then request that our transactions be downloaded. And there they are. So easy and fast. Once an online statement is downloaded, we can go to the account register and verify the transactions. And look, they're easy to find because they show up bold in the register. What's this symbol for? It means we entered a transaction ourselves and money has matched it with a downloaded one. Clever. That also means then that any bold transactions without the symbol are new transactions added to our account register. Right. And the E in the cleared column means that this transaction is electronically downloaded, so we know it's cleared the bank. So we scroll through the account register looking for bold transactions. When we're sure that a transaction is correct, we accept it. As soon as we accept it, the transaction is no longer bold. We can even accept all the transactions if we feel we don't need to review them. You got it, especially if we know our balance is exactly right. It's great having the convenience of online banking without sacrificing any of our privacy or security. I agree. And our personal finances become even more automated and manageable than ever before. Well, it looks like that's all of the tutorials, so now it's time for the it's time to go. So anyway, we're gonna gonna turn off the computer now because it's time to conclude this part of the walkthrough. We're not done with this walkthrough yet, though, because there's still more to do. We still need to play Super Collapse 3, you know. I'm not sure when there's gonna be a time for me to do that because um, Dad isn't here and um, it's not the weekend at all. Like I'm just saying. All right. Well, that's going to conclude part 10 of the 2020 edition of the walkthrough of the Dell Dimension 4600 running Windows XP Home Edition. Stay tuned next time for part number 11. This is Colton Tackett on Sonic and OK Kill for next 2020 signing off. Catch on the flip-flop, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, everybody.